Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us um, at the IBTM Accelerate stage um, for this session at quarter past two, which is all about optimizing the delegate check-in and tracking at your event. Today, we are joined by Danny, the CEO of uh, Field Drive, um, one of the best event technology companies in the game, who will be guiding you through this. Um, feel free to go old school, ask questions, hands up. Um, and there will be recording of the session after the event as well, in case you want to watch anything back. So, Danny, please join us on the stage. Good morning. Um, I have one slide. Well, I have two slides. Oh, there's a box. I have to click this twice. What about the dog? There's been, a, there's been a huge study that if a presentation has a dog in it, it will be more memorable. So this will probably be the only presentation at IBTM you see with a dog in it. So you remember, oh, that's the guy with the dog and the weird, and the weird glasses. So. I'd like to ask you one question. Um, we're trying to find out what elements could inf affect the budget when you do delegate check-in. So what things you can control and what would impact your budget. So you're organizing delegate check-in, batch printing, track and trace. What elements would impact your budget? And think, think broadly, think about everything you can do to improve your costs of the delegate check-in. Okay, we got staff. Only staff. There's more. Come on. You can also shout it. Travel costs. number of kiosks. Name batch holders. The batch stock itself. Cost of the lanyards, if there is a batch pocket, yes or no. One or both sides, good. So we're just pulling the audience for you, the arrived. If what can influence your budget when you're doing check-in and batching for delegates? That's what we're looking for, just input ideas, on-site sales, which supplier. Okay, I don't see the most important element actually. which affects a lot of these above, and that is the time you need to process one delegate. This has a huge impact on the overall cost. Let me explain you why. It's not about, the first thing is the speed of the printers, or the, how, how fast does the technology work, right? You can improve a bit on that, but all the printers in the market print roughly on the same speed, depending if you want full color or or black and white, it will maybe defer one or two seconds. But every second in processing the delegates is money. Which means that that's what you're going to focus on, reducing that checking time. And how can you do that? First of all, queue manager. That is the guy that's the most important in keeping the people moving. You have a long queue coming in. Rather than having people wait at the end of the queue and then waiting until there's a station free and walking up there, that time you could have printed two badges. If you have a lot of, if you have a lot of crew or a lot of, um, a lot of delegates, that actually can make the difference in needing the double of equipment to have the same check-in time. So if you focus on the time that the delegates pass through, those seconds, every second you can delay or you can squeeze off there, it's going to save you money. 
what is the what is the most important what is the most important time consumer when people check in you think that is the most time consuming element that's people looking for their barcodes walking up to the kiosk and then they start oh right i need a barcode where's that email uh, wait wi-fi uh, you can you can print five badges in that time so don't let people walk out of the queue when they haven't shown their barcode we have a sort what we what we call a cattle cage at the end of the queue line so people that don't show their barcode go find it there and then you can come out again so that saves you time on the kiosk second th second thing that's um, costing time chit chat social talk keep the people moving where's the toilets where's the <laughs> stay polite but try to move that information and questions to the next stage there's a customer service desk don't start a conversation or social talk with a client on the kiosk. And if you're working with your own staff on site, that's becoming a problem. Because you know the clients, you're gonna want to greet them. And oh my God, this has been so long since I've seen you. Hug, hug. Another five batches gone. my glasses um, extra services at the kiosk the kiosk is there to print your batch as quickly as possible everything else keep it away lanyards parking vouchers uh, gift bags whatever keep it away from the kiosk put a second stage like you print a batch this takes like four or five seconds to print a batch you should be able to process a delegate in six to seven seconds. Six to seven seconds, that's how fast this. We allow 10 is like the absolute maximum to process somebody. Which means that if you would double that time with all the chit chat and all the, you would need a double of equipment, but also the double of staff. So that's where the staff comes in because every kiosk should have a staff member, but we are now working more towards a touchless experience where one hostess can not process one kiosk but two or three or four so you save on the staffing cost and how we do that a good UI so people can self-service and they're more used to it secondly we've introduced facial recognition check-in uh, five years ago now we did our first uh, event five years ago with some pilots and we've done in september this year we have done 58,000 delegates 58,000 delegates with facial recognition and 50 percent of the people opted in for facial recognition we had a throughput time of six seconds per delegate so just walking up to the kiosk people were still looking for their barcode because they forgot to upload their photo and the batch was already there just keep them moving. Facial recognition is really speeding up the process. And the extra cost for the technology is actually levering out with the need for more equipment, with the need for more staff. So that's how we try to look at every second or split second in the process and improving it. Good communication and signage. Prepare the delegates for what they will need to do when they are coming to the kiosk. Have a little information, movies, running around with scan your barcode like this, like in the airport. Unpack, blah, blah, blah. So this is something you can do. Good, good management. If you work with barcodes, send them the barcode. Good morning. If you're working with barcodes, the old style, <laughs> send them the barcode like the day of the event. Because if you send it two days before, it's going to be lost in their mails. They're going to have to check and find the mails. And make sure that your staff 
that is doing the queue management knows what the title of the mail is. It's like, where's the mail? Uh, how's that mail called? Uh, I received so many, so many mails from IBTM. What's the title of the mail so I can find it in my mailbox? Make sure you do it right before the event, or even send a, rem a kind reminder the day of the event at the opening time. Something else we need to do, we tend to do, is a soft opening. If you have a really big event like 10, 15, 20,000 delegates, and your keynote speaker is uh, Richard Branson, your keynote speaker starts at 9 o'clock. At what time do you think your delegates are going to be in front of the door? At 8.45. All of them, yeah. So plan accordingly. If you, if you put Richard Branson at 10:30 or 11, you say doors open at nine, but you actually open at eight. You won't have people waiting in front of the door when the doors open. We've seen it with with Keller Williams as like an 18,000 people event. We had 7,000 people waiting when the gates opened. There's no way you can get rid of that queue. There's no way. It's going to be a constant queue. So if you open like half an hour or an hour before and the early arrivers that like, oh, I can already pick up my batch, great. So that's if you start with a queue or somewhere within the process, you're blocked. Wi-Fi goes down, printers go down, whatever, the light goes out, boom, boom. If you have a queue, you can't work it away. Once the queue is, it's like on the highway. If somebody stops, there's an accident. Half an hour later, when the accident is gone, people are still queuing at the same point. So it's exactly the same with, uh, with delegates. If you work with, uh, with self-service, barcode scanning, batch printing, make sure that your user interface is intuitive and that people know where to scan the barcode. We've seen, we've seen people do everything scanning barcodes like. Where does it go? Make sure it's clear. Announce it in the, in the queue so they know where they have to scan their barcode, where the scanner is, and make it obvious. And that's a problem because some of the kiosks are designed to do this. When you go to the airport, you do this. That's what's the most common. People are used to doing this. If you don't do this, then they will be everywhere. <laughs> like another five seconds gone, one delegate more. I think I've got everything on this topic. Second one is shipping cost. If you work with, with, uh, with kiosks, they have to come from somewhere, right? Most of the time they're not at the venue, you have to ship them. So the bigger the kiosk, if you look at a provider, we see some providers in the industry shipping one or two stations per pallet. Have you looked at the logistics prices the last year? They're through the sky. If you can fit the double or the triple of equipment on one pallet, you're saving on all the hidden costs because if you compare two suppliers and they say shipping is at cost, you don't know what that at cost is and we can only calculate it when we know the time of departure, how much is going to weigh, how much equipment we need. So if you work with the same supplier, a kiosk, and one supplier has two kiosks on a pallet and the other has six or eight on a pallet, that's going to be your shipping cost times three or times four. Sometimes the shipping cost can be higher than the total cost of rental for your equipment. So that's an important element that can affect your budget. Make sure you know at least a rough idea that it's, it's almost impossible to get a full shipping price ahead. That's, you can get an estimation or a from, uh, from two. It depends on uh, grouping and on, on the time you ship it and when you want it to arrive. It needs to be pre-arrival or whatever. So the logistics cost is an important part of the, um, of the shipment of, or of the total cost. Also, depending on if you have staff flying in or staff traveling, try to work with as much as possible with local staff. So if the kiosks are e easy to operate, don't bring in staff remotely. What we do is we can monitor every station remotely. So that makes that 
the technical staff that's on site is actually not highly skilled. They know how to manage a printer, they know how to print a batch and change an ink color, but they don't need to worry about APIs and, and changing integrations and, and plugging in cables and connecting to uh, routers and setting up routers. Try to keep everything as simple as possible so that you can work with local people. We have a lot of local people and feet on the ground that do a certification training and we have them all over the world. So if I have an event in Singapore, I can work with local people from Singapore setting up our equipment and the equipment actually comes from the warehouse in Singapore. We don't have to ship it out from Europe or from other regions. Another element we saw there is uh, staff cost. Staff cost, I already talked about it. Uh, when you have look at staffing cost, and we're seeing more a tendency of uh, moving into self-service. When you can do self-service check-in, that's going to save you staff. And staff, you know that if, if you plan your staff accordingly, you, you know that you have like a, a peak time of one hour or two hour before your keynote speaker, depending on the event, but you have like this peak. Once this peak is gone, you see, if you look here, half of these hostesses are standing there like, for the rest of the four days, four days event, because the rush is gone. Make sure you regroup them and that you organize them and that you can, you can repurpose these people at other places in the event. It doesn't need, they don't need to be there with 12 when the day one is passed. Just relocate them and if they're local people, uh, you don't need to fly them in. That's gonna save you a lot of money. We see a lot of, um, increased interest in delegate tracking. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit of word. Is anyone familiar, ha has anyone of you done any delegate tracking in event? Use RFID, NFC, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi tracking. What, what have you used? Uh, NFC tracking. NFC tracking. And how was your um, experience with the accuracy of the data? Uh, variable. Variable, not good, okay. <laughs> Any other technologies that have been used? No? Are you familiar with the terminology? RFID, NFC, BLE, Wi-Fi? Who's not familiar with the technology? With the okay. Actually, a lot of people use, we want to do RFID tracking because they, it's just a name for a technology where you have a radio frequency used or you have an interaction with wireless interaction with the delegates. Um, one of the things that is used a lot is RFID. What an RFID does, it's a little chip, like in uh, the security you have in bookstores when you walk through the gate. It's actually an antenna that reflects towards a little chip and it bounces back to the antenna and that antenna captures the signal. So you walk through a gate with 200 delegates for a main session. You all walk through the same gate. This is actually a bag of water. <laughs> It's 90% water, yeah? If like 200 bags of water walk through a gate with 200 chips in them, how many of you think are going to be recognized correctly? Uh, about 60, 70%. So if you're investing in a tracking technology, make sure you identify the objective first. Don't say like, we want to do RFID because it sounds sexy. Try to identify exactly what is the data going to be used for. How can I monetize this data? Why is this data important for me? Not about, oh, this BLE sounds cool and this Wi-Fi tracking sounds cool. Because every technology has got strengths. RFID is good for large audiences. It's low cost, but it's a huge setup cost. You have to put in all those gates, all those antennas, all those reflectors to capture data and your data accuracy will be 70, 80 percent if you're lucky. Same with NFC. NFC is not a technology made to track people. Near field communication. It's more made for close contact. Like you do beep. There it's reasonably accurate. Another technology that's used is BLE. Bluetooth. Bluetooth is actually also 
a communication protocol where you have a little chip. This is like a token that's attached to your badge. And it's actually the token that's sending out the signal. And the readers are capturing it in specific areas. You can do that even under a table. If you have a meeting, you know that how long people stayed around that table. You have uh, an exhibitor booth. You can track with BLE beacons. And mind, be mindful on, there is no such thing as 100% accuracy when you start with automated tracking. Even when you do the old school bar, bar, barcode scanning, there's going to be errors. Maybe that girl went to the bathroom just before the session started and she forgot to scan. Or maybe people stayed in the room and she didn't scan the people that were actually in the room while the session was done and they were already in there for the next session. So, or <laughs> one thing we had with, uh, with BLE tracking is like, wow, there's a lot of people around these five booths. Great, these exhibitors must be really happy. Well, they weren't. You know why not? Because the boot at the end of the hall was giving out a free bear or free teddy bear, make your own teddy bear thing. And the queue was actually waiting in front of those five, of those five boots. And they got scanned and it was, oh, there's a lot of traffic on those boots. No, they were not happy because they had the queue in front of their boot. Nobody, nobody could reach them. So be mindful that the data you get is only as good as when you identify it in the field and when you see what's really happening on the show floor. But we see an increased interest in delegate tracking, uh, and that's past uh, the virtual era, where in a, in a virtual meeting you can measure everything, how long people look, how long they click, how long they stay in a session. You can do even camera tracking. Um, so there has been an availability, and people are finally starting to understand the value of the data. We've been advocating this for 10 years. I was ROI, event ROI certified, I think 11 or 12 years ago. It's like missionary work. <laughs> Trying to find an organizer and can you, I, what's, what's your biggest event? Number of people? Yeah. Um, 5,000. 5,000, okay. What is the real objective for that event? Can you identify in one sentence what your objective for that event is? What do you want to achieve with the event? Me as an organizer or uh, managing? Money. You want to make money? Yeah. Well, that's a good objective. It's just one word. I want to make money. I want to be rich. How can you make money? How can you use tracking technology to achieve that objective? Oh, I can do... Maybe I can do... Um, Sponsoring on the batch, but not simple sponsoring. No, we're going to do targeted advertising. I'm going to print you your advertising for the delegate based on their persona. So I'm going to identify my target group, and you're going to go to an event, and you might be interested in tomatoes, and you might be interested in apples and pineapples. So I'm going to make sure that you have the pineapple advertising. So you can do, with full color batch printing, you can actually target your audience. So that can be, and based on your specific objective, we're going to look like, what technology can we use to achieve the objective? And not like, oh, there's a technology, let's use that. It's just the other way around. Define your objectives first. Try to find these bullet points which are important for every stakeholder in the event. That's not the guys with the steak at the barbecue. That's everybody involved, your exhibitors, the organizer, um, the delegates. And when you start to do delegate tracking, identify the value for the delegates. Because I can tell you the next day when you have a, this is, a, this is just a zip code, but if you have an NFC or a BLE token, 20% is gonna stay at the hotel the next day because they took it off or they put it away. There's other technologies which were like the holy grail. Yeah, let's do um, mobile device tracking with BLE. Great. Switch on Bluetooth. Um, download app. So how, many how many delegates do you think really do that? And if you do it by, by one o'clock, your battery will be dead. So 
it depends on, on the type of event, the technology you use, um, it, it's, and that starts with the objective. That's the first thing you look at, and that's a conversation. And not because one provider sells RFID and the other says like, oh, NFC is much better, BLE is much better. It's actually the objective that drives the technology that you're going to And if it's, it's just a clicker or uh, <laughs> somebody that puts markers on a, on a paper with a pencil, if that serves the objective, why go for the expensive and the, and the fancy stuff? Are there any questions up to now? No? How long have we got, uh, Timekeeper? Four hours. Great, thank you. Did I forget anything? I need to have my external memory. No, I think I'm. Um, I think I'm pretty pretty good. So which technology then? do you think we should be using? Yeah, which technology should we be using? We, we, you don't see the forest, the trees through the forest anymore because there's so much technology. I don't think there's one technology that's 100% fail-proof. What we've done is we have done multi-layers of technology. One thing I haven't token, uh, talked to you about is uh, facial and emotional analytics. Um, you can actually set up a camera and measure the expressions of the audience and the response to a speaker. And if you overlay that with the speaker timeline and the, and the video, you will see that the same speaker and the audience response before the lunch or after lunch is totally different, that the engagement is different. So what technology do I use? I believe that a multi-layer technology is what gives you the best result, like doing scanning, barcode scanning, but also combine it with BLE or with another technology. Because then you have two points of failure, but also two points of recovering the failure that was made. So the higher the accuracy, I would go for a technology that overlays two different tracking technologies, or three, depending on where you are, and you don't have to use them all. You might do BLE to measure the overall measurement on the show floor, but if you want correct data for the meeting room and for the sessions, and that's important to you, because one of your objectives might be like, I want 90% uh, of the C-level attendance to be in that, and that, and that session, because I want them to learn something. That's a clear objective. Then you need to be sure that that data is correct. So then you're going to add an extra layer of um, interaction and engagement and measuring. So. Be sure that you identify your objectives and that you choose the right technology appropriately. Anything else? More questions? Yeah. The BLE technology, you were saying it needed to have a little chip, which of course is not sustainable then really either because we need to have it on something. We can't use it on the phone somehow? No, that's, that's what I said. You can use BLE on the phone, but then you, as soon as you ask the delegate to do something, expect that you lose 50% of your audience. If you want them to download an app, and I mean, I'm a tech guy, I didn't download the IBTM app. Where are the worst ones? <laughs> Where are the worst ones? That <laughs> so it, as soon as you want a delegate to do something and you want to do passive tracking, you're going to lose half of the audience. And then people don't just, just look at, at the tech. BLE has, uh, by the way, if you start doing large-scale BLE events, your threshold, maximum threshold would be around 4,000, 5,000 delegates. Once you go over that, there's too much information coming in and also your data accuracy will go down. So identifying how it works and understanding the technology, not saying, oh, we want RFID because it's cool. That should be your uh, main takeaway for today. Thank you. You can applaud now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Danny. And just to remind people, we have some fantastic sessions carrying on. Um, the next one will be in about 15 minutes on the new face of event tech entrepreneurism. Um, and the rest of the agenda is outside. And again, if you want to grab this session on replay, it will be made available on demand. <laughs>